All right, Shalom, Shalom Rastafari. All right, well, we're going to continue. This will be like the part, the part three of Jah's people are destined to reign. But first, in other words, but first, we need to have the knowledge of the Son of God. You understand? But first, we need to repent. You understand? We need to have a change of mind and be born again from above. And this is the very teaching of His Imperial Majesty Ketamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie the first. You understand? Now, more than us even going forward and and teaching others, we need to learn this ourselves. Now, what we had left off, we had left off in Mateo's Wengel or in Matthew's in Matthew's Gospel, um, chapter 28, and we was reading and studying verse 16 to verse 20. We're gonna go over this this um, verse uh, verse 19 and verse 20 once again. In verse 19, let's get our scriptures. The Samar will mention Kedusa Hanwamla. And he says, Go, and, we, and as we've been reminded, go is a command. Go is a command. It's not passive, it's imperative. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's, it's not, it's not um, um, like um, if you would like to, it's, it's go. Is do this. But then we had read that actually in verse 17, that when they saw him, right, the disciples, the 11 disciples, 11, right, that, that they worshipped him, but some doubted. Some of them doubted. Now, in the Schofield Study Bible, there's a subscription D, and it sends you to John 20, um, chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, um, I mean, chapter 15, verses 5 and 6. Now, for diligent students, students that really seek to, d disciples that seek to learn this, we would advise that ones, you know, go through all of that in the selected passage, you understand, just to get the idea, you understand, of it, you understand. So we have to consult with our instructional manual, you know, and some only ins consult with the instruction manual when there's a problem. And then when they consult with it, they look through it, they find what the problem could be, but then they find a lot of other interesting things as well. You understand? And this is what you will find, too, when we consult with the B-I-B-L-E. So here it says, go ye therefore. And we said when the therefore, the silazi or the ergo, we've got to figure out, well, why, what is the therefore there for? And it's because all power is given to who? It's given to Yeshua HaMoshiach. It's given to our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Where? In, in just heaven? Jesus has heavenly power? No, it says in heaven and earth. So where are we? Are we not on the earth? Are we not in the earth? You understand? In heaven and in earth. It doesn't say nothing about the world. You understand? Because my kingdom is not of what? This world. It's not of this system. You understand? If it were, my servants my, my, would fight for it. All right? Now, if we are truly of Rastafari, then we have to recognize and prepare, you understand, for the fight, prepare for the victory, you understand, because the battle is not I and I, the battle is Jah's, it's the Lord's. The battle is not our battle, you understand, but the battle is the Lord's, and if all power is given to him in heaven and earth, well, you should know who has won the battle already, you understand, but are we able and are we willing, you understand, to be those vessels you know, that's in our free will right there. That's in our free will. It's not that Jah is going to snap his finger and make everybody, people say, well, if God is God, why don't he snap his finger and make everything lovely? You understand? But really, if you were true sons and daughters of God, you understand, going all the way back to Adam, you understand, why did you allow the devil to take over your dominion? You know what I'm saying? This is a question that we as black men have to really recognize, and it's through the pure, the pure teaching of his majesty that we finally get an understanding, in particular. Because we're speaking to Beta Israel, to the Jew, to the black, to the Hebrew, to Ethiopian Hebrew, and to the Gentile. Now, some will say, well, why uh, can a white boy be a Rastafari? Can a, it's like saying, can a white man be a Christian, in a sense? You know, you know some folks will ask that. But many of the Europeans or the Romans did accept our black Lord and Savior, and they were martyred for it. When we hear about the martyrdom of, of, of Christians, 
And how do we know it? Because we find that there were disciples, even in Caesar's household. And there's, well, these were people who were part of the system of things. But when the gospel message and the word reached them, they were willing to forget about all the Roman gods and everything and to accept the one God and to accept his son, to accept Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know, and so when you really get to recognize the truth of this matter, you can see the revelation in this time, and it gives us that instruction. You know what I'm saying? So here it says, go ye therefore, because all power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. No, don't be afraid. If all power is given to our master, then, then why should we, if Jah is on I and I side in the Lord's, why should I and I be afraid? Why should I and I fear? Are we born again? You know what I'm saying? Do we have the Holy Spirit? That's why Christ told the disciples, they were asking about the kingdom. They were like, well, it, is it now at this time that you shall restore the kingdom to Israel? And we know what Yeshua HaMoshiach said to them. It's like right now, is it now the time for us to, to rule? You know what I'm saying? He didn't say, no, you're not going to rule. It's not going to be about this. You know what I'm saying? It's not about the kingdom. No, what he said to them, he said to them, it is not for you, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 7. It is not for you. He wasn't speaking to the Gentiles. He wasn't speaking to the Romans. He was speaking to Beta Israel. He was speaking to his disciples, Dek and the Morit. He says, it's not for you to know the times or the season which the Father, he said, which I have in my hand. He said, which the Abba, which the Father, which Abba Kedus, Kedus Sabatachin, have put in his own power. In his own authority, his own authority, he says in verse 8, and here's the apostolic commission. We just touched on the disciples, the great commission of the disciples in Matthew chapter 28, verses, um, from verse 16 to verse 20. And now here we just, we're just comparing scripture with scripture in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, verse 8. He says, but ye, ye mean y'all, y'all mean all of us receiving it, but ye shall receive power. So let's read this now, receiving this word. Not just ye throwing it out there, but now receiving. But we shall receive power. We shall receive chayel. We shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit, the men says, Kedus, the Ruach HaKodesh in the Hebrew, is come upon you. And ye shall be what? Ye shall be witnesses, bearing witness to what? To me. Who is the me? It's Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior. Witnesses to me in both Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. That means the farthest off region. All, like we say in the Nyabingi has a song, every goody should have known. You know, in other words, everyone should know. You understand the teaching of his majesty. You understand? Know Everyone should know the testimony of his son, the testimony of Yeshua Ha Moshiach. That is, you understand, know the work, you understand, know for us. That's, that's the work that we must fulfill. But the first work is to trust, you understand, know in the one whom he has sent. You understand? Know the Bible says, be like Eve, but we overstand that word, be like Eve. That's the kindergarten level. Believe, be lie. There's a lie in the middle of it. Okay, yeah, we get that and everything. But now we want to grow up. We want to go to high school. We want to get to that which is, as Kedemawi Haile Selassie says, that which is of high value. You understand? Know the, the, the be like Eve, that's, that, that's good at that, at that kindergarten level. But some of you are stuck. You understand? Know Almost like left in remedial. It's time for us to move forward, to go. You understand? Know saying? To go. Right? So here in, we're going back to, going forward, should we say, to Matthew chapter 28, um, verse 19. It says, go ye therefore and teach. What? Teach. But how can we teach if we don't know? So we have to learn. But here to them who had been disciples and had grown. This is almost like the graduation. When we get to Matthew chapter 28, it's like that, at that graduation of the discipleship, right? And then when we go to Acts of the Apostles, like going to like the, almost like the, the, the college or the collegiate level, university, the universal level. That's why he said, be witnesses to him in both, in both in Judea and in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the what uttermost part. Of the earth. So here in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, he says, To go ye therefore and teach all nations, all nations, all nations, 
And it's interesting if we really recognize this word as being the teaching of his majesty and we see the Rastafari from all different nations. You understand? From all, we see the word as being fulfilled. So how dare we do like the, the overzealous Jews, our, our black ancestors, you understand, who basically had this Gentile Jewish problem because that's where this whole racial white supremacy you understand, uh, was bucking up against God's supremacy. You understand, but we took our eyes off the prize of God's supremacy and basically the hate that hate produced. So when they said white supremacy, we said black supremacy. And this is not to say that black supremacy as a principle of teaching, you understand, does not have a value. You understand, especially for those who have been bombarded, suppressed by all the lies and dissemination. But that's a level of learning. One has to grow. One has to learn what they have to learn at that grade and then move to the next grade. You understand? And stop getting stuck, getting left behind, so to speak. So here it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Ab, and of the Son, the World, and of the Holy Spirit, the Memphis Caduce. Teaching them to observe, to do what? To observe all things. All things. They say, well, observe the things you like or the things that your church does, but don't observe. Look, yeah, Christ, he teaches that. He commands. But you don't have to do that because that's not our tradition. You understand? Who are you going to trust? Your church didn't save you. It is Yeshua. It is the Jesus that saves you. You understand? It's that grace through that faith in Yeshua. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. He has done what? He has commanded them. And therefore, by extension, in the Holy Spirit, he commands us, right? It says, um, and lo, and look, hine, and neho. You understand? Look, look and see. Here it is. I am, or more correctly, I be. I be with you always. Always. All the time. He's with us always. Now, I, I was saying in the last um, 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 part of this, I was saying that it's kind of interesting in a sense. What's interesting is that you hear Christians saying, we can't wait till Jesus return again. Right? And, you know, they said, you know, they're Christian, they believe in the Bible, they know the Bible, they go to Bible studies and everything. And he's still saying that. Because that's by tradition. By tradition, they say that, but it's clear what he says right here. He says he is with them, and therefore with us, how long? How long for until he ascended? You understand? How long um, until until um, 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 the fourth century? You understand? Uh, how long? You understand? Is he with them? He's with them and with I and I all ways, right? All ways, right? Now the question is, are we with him? You see, are we? Are we who, whose word we're going to accept? The, the preacher, the pastor, if they are preaching opposite of this, contrary to because the world well, tradition, well, I'm theologian. You know, there's a lot of them be like, I'm theologian. Well, then that, that means you should, by principle, know this. You understand? But how can you be theologian and you're teaching contrary to Christ? You understand? On the theologian level, who is the top theologian in that sense? It is Yeshua. He is the Theologos. He is the Word of God. You know what they're saying? They're saying they're the Word of God, not you, because they're, they're, I'm preacher, I'm pastor, I got status. They're the same old Pharisees. They're the same old Sadducees. They're the same old scribes. They're the same old zealots. You know what I mean? It's the same old, same old, but now we know how to overcome when we get the instruction. You know what I'm saying? So it says, I am with you always, even, even to the what? To the end of the what? Alam to the end of the Olam, to the end of this dispensation, to the end of the cycle. Now, this was interesting. People saying, like, yo, 2012, the Mayans say that it's the end of the world. You understand? Everybody getting panicked and everything. But he says he's with I and I always, even to the end of the world. Even to the end. So he's with us. But a lot of folks said, the end of the world's coming. I can't wait till Jesus return. But he said, um, he said, I guess they're not really living in context with what Christ said. And that's why they, because they're not living, his word is not living in them, so they feel that, well, he must not be there. But really, he hasn't left them, they have left him. They're not focusing on what he says, they're focusing on what men and people say. It says, curse be the one who relies on the arm of the flesh. You understand? Curse be the one who relies on the fleshy. 
you know what I'm saying, or the fleshy mind, the carnal mind, or what people can see, taste, touch. They, they rely on the five foolish senses, the five foolish virgins, instead of the five wise virgins, the five spiritual senses, because perhaps they have not been born again. So these senses are not developed because they can only be developed, you understand, um, after birth, you understand, after they are born again. That's what we say, the, the repentance and the born again process is the initiation. You understand? Is the initiation. So when we say we're disciples, you have to recognize what that word for disciple is. He says to, to the disciples, if anyone will come after me, he must do what? Deny himself. That's probably the most difficult thing. Deny. You got to let. You got to let go of his ego. You got to let go of his ego. Let go of his ego. Speaking a little Latin there, the ego, ego. He's let go of his ego. You know what I'm saying? Let go of his, his own self, selfish. You know what I'm saying? So it's not having a zeal of God, not according to knowledge, seeking to establish one's own righteousness. You know what I'm saying? Through so-called worldly, whatever, legalities. You understand? Gentile, Pax Romana, legalities, and through his own self-righteousness, what, what, what pleases himself. You know, like people, you know, when you start to say a lot, well, I feel. You understand? See, your feelings, when you're born again, your, your, your feelings become new feelings. You start to want to feel, you understand, Christ. It's like, what, it's like Christ is saying to you, you feel me? When you're reading this word, do you feel me? But instead, if you're not born again, you're reading this word still blinded. You understand? Because some folks, you'll teach them, teach them, teach them, but you might not have taught them the first, what be the first. You understand? What be the first? Now, it says right here, amen. Amen has been put in right there. The Holy Spirit is sending our night to another um, portion of um, Scripture right here. It's sending us to the book of Hebrews because we are Hebrews, right? And Hebrew, they say, means one who crossed over um, the Euphrates River bed, that Abraham was the first to be called a Hebrew. No, he wasn't the first to be called a Hebrew, but of those black Assyrians, yes, he was one of the first to come out and return to the root. In other words, he returned to Africa. That's what basically Abraham did. But let us get into this right here. We're going to go into um, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter chapter um, 5. And we've been there before, but it's important to go there again. Because faith comes by what? By hearing. And hearing by the word of Jah, by the word of Christos, by the word of God and his Christ. Verse 11, chapter 5, verse 11. This is speaking of, it's an appeal. It's an appeal. It's like, I beseech you. I'm begging you. It's a warning in, the, in that sense. And it comes on the part three, which is chapter five, and it's our great um, leak, uh, um, 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 the, the leak of Kahinat, Bamarinya. In the Hebrew, is the Kahin or the Kohen HaGadol, the, 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 the high priest. So Yeshua is our what? High priest. You, we have to recognize that because you've been calling men and people high priests. And maybe they're high, and maybe they're priests, but they're not I and I high priests. So let, let's understand that. Let, let's, according to this word, unless there's another Bible you're dealing with, you know, we're saying another, another gospel, another Jesus, something like that. But if we're, well, if we're dealing with the teaching of his majesty, it's the B-I-B-L-E. For my part, Negusa Neges Kadamawi, Haile Shalasi, Haile Shalasi, the first says, for my part, I glory, I am honored in the Bible. So if we are to honor Abba Tachin, honor Abba Kedus, honor Kedus Abba Tachin, then we need to honor this word in spirit and in truth. So then it speaks about Christ, the Moshiach, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. It, often a lot of the Rastafari would ask questions about the order of Melchizedek. What do you think about the order of Melchizedek? What do you think about Prince Charles Emmanuel, um, uh, Prince Charles Edward Emmanuel, something like that? What do you think about him? What do you think about this one or so forth and so on? Or this one, so on? No, 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 no. Let's get to the foundation, the groundation. You know what I'm Let's get to the foundation, the groundation. If you want to get into a little bit of the backstory, as they would say, or the foundation, the groundation on Melchizedek, you need to check out this particular book right here, the Gedla Adam. You understand the Gedla Adam, or the conflict of Adam against Satan, or the Ethiopic book of Adam and Eve. 
you need to check out a copy of, of this, all right? Because this was known to the first century Christians like the book of Enoch, and the, which is called Metzafa Hanok, and the book of Jubilees, which is also called Little Genesis, or the Metzaf, um, the Metzafa Kufale, you understand? Iyol Beliu. You understand? These are foundational texts right here. You understand? Because when we're reading this, you understand half of the story, a portion of the story, you understand, which, which was known to the, the first century and the early century Christians, has been taken out. So a lot of things have been taken out of context. And it's one of the reasons why, in ignorance, people reject Negus and Neges, the King of Kings, and even don't really get to understand what the true Rastafari are truly preaching and proclaiming, you understand, concerning this reality, the reality. So Christ is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. He's a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And you know, there can only be one, like the Highlander. There can only be one, really, you know what I mean? So you will have to check that out. One of the great um, abominations to Christ is this um, ecclesiastical stuff. You know, that's a big, because what happens there, it separates the brotherhood into so-called priest, right, and, and laity. Or really, it separates the ones who read and know from the ones who are in superstitious belief, the laity. You understand? That was never, never, ever the intention of our Lord and Savior, that there should be a divided brotherhood, you know, between priests on one side and laity on the next side. That's garbage. You understand? That, that, is, that is totally garbage. It's not pure garbage because it's not pure. It's just garbage. You know, but then we're going to get into that a little bit more because it's very important. Because the Word basically says that when we are born again and when we grow, as we grow up, we, are, we become priests. And so we are becoming priests to Him. We are priest kings. And see, in this lecture and teaching and sermon, the Sipkat on John's people, I and I, who are destined to reign, we, we're, we're going to get into that. Let's, let, let's just get through this right here. All right, so, um, in fact, the Holy Spirit says, um, let's just go through this whole chapter. All right, it's just about 14 verses. That shouldn't be too difficult. You understand? Let's go through 14 verses right here. So, first, it deals the office of the uh, Kohen HaGadol, or the Kohen HaGadol, the Lika Kahenat, the office. What is the office? It says, verse 1, this Ma'ab, or well, do a man says, Kadu Sahadu Amlak. And then below it says, for every high priest, every lika kahinat, every kahin or kohen hagadol, taken from among men is ordained for men in all things pertaining, respecting or pertaining to, concerning God, concerning Egeziavihir, concerning Ha Elohim, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices. For sins, gifts and sacrifices for chatiyat, when you F up, you understand that he is the one that offers to God, you understand, those gifts and those offerings, because he's the one who is ordained from men, you understand, for men in all things. That's why, that's why he took on our flesh, our humanity, you understand, so when we recognize that Christ is black, there's more than just, ha ha, look, he's black, there's a real responsibility for us as the once lost but now found, Beta Israel. So, so you won't ask, so why we as black people got to go through all of this? Well, we must have done something, 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 something. Nobody want to talk about. We must have done something, something wrong. As Barana Salase Shalase says and sings, um, uh, A.K.A. Bob Marley, you understand, in one of his songs. We must have done something, you understand. And speaking about this race. Right? You must have fallen in that sense, in, in a sense of speaking from an from a Old Testament sense of grace, Old Testament sense of favor, and even in the New Testament on a certain level. So when we look at a Rastafari revelation, it's really a mercy, you know, saying, of God in Christ, to, 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 so that none, because he's not willing that any should perish, you know, saying, so the Father himself has made himself known and has affirmed and confirmed 
the word of God in Christ, the word of Yeshua, Hamoshi. And this is what we find in his imperial majesty. You know what I'm saying? When we are able to open up our eyes, when really when the Holy Spirit opens up our eyes to see, you know what I'm saying, to see the reality, the vision, you know what I'm saying, of God in and his Christ and God in and through his Christ. All right? So, verse 2, it says, who can have compassion on the ignorant? It's my mind of the, the word sounds his majesty when he says, um, um, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, well, who can resist an invitation so full of compassion? Now, um, there's, a, there's a whole message really in there as well. But let, let's go on because that word compassion just kind of came up. You know what I'm saying? Who can have compassion? You know what I'm saying? On the ignorant, on the ones that don't know, and on them that are out of the way. Who? Not really me. You think I know? It's, it's because of Yeshua that I and I is able to have compassion. Because I see how much compassion He have on I and I when I and I was ignorant and out of the way as well. He says, for that He Himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason there, hereof, he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sin. So what it's giving us here is a type of the Old Testament high priest. You know what I'm saying? The Old Testament pattern of the high priest. All right? And the, a comparison now, as well as the upgrade to Yeshua, you know what I'm saying? The perfection of that. He said, I've not come to um, do away with the law, destroy the law of the prophets. I've come to fulfill, to fulfill it. So we're learning what it was and what it should be and what it has become in the fullness. So it says that he has to offer for himself, you understand, for the people and for himself. And no man, verse 4, taketh this honor to himself. No man takes this cover, this cover to himself. This is not a, like a personal, in that sense, thing. But he that is called, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. This is important when we say, well, the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. And one says, well, brother, what can I do? You really, first of all, have to be born again. You know what I'm saying? You have to grow, and you have to then, then you recognize what calling, you know what I'm saying, that you have been called and what particular gifts that God has given you. And he has given you not just like when you're born again, but, but, but even before he was born again, because the gifts and the calling of God are, are without repentance. In other words, one had received them even though they were in their old, foul, degenerated state before they were regenerated. You know what I'm saying? In spirit, in the inner man, in the inner sense. As we say, Rastafari is an inborn conception. That is true. But are you now um, manifesting and overstanding that through the word or through tradition, men and people, who are ignorant of the teaching of his majesty. So it says, And no man taketh this honor to himself, but he that is called of God as Aaron. So now one said, I want to be a priest. You know what I'm saying? I want to be a priest. No, it's not like I want to be a priest. It's like a call. You have a call on you. You understand? And then when you answer that call, you are blessed. Now Christ is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So also Christo, so also the Mashiach, so also the Messiah, the anointed. It's a about when he, was, he glorified not himself. Christ did not glorify himself to be made a kahin, a kohen, a haggadol, a lika kahinat. He didn't glorify himself. But he that said, he that said to him, what? Thou art my son. Thou, you are my son this Today, today, have I begotten, have I given birth to thee? As he saith also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, this is concerned, this is from the Psalms, right? This comes from the Psalms right here. And there's a whole footer down here that is interesting because it speaks about Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a suited type of Christ as high priest because, and it's based on Genesis XIV or Genesis chapter 14, verse 18, that he was a king priest. 
He was a king priest, a priest king, a king priest. And it gives various scriptures there. Then secondly, it says, his name means, it's said to mean, my king is righteousness. Isaiah X, X, I, 5, or 11 and 5. He was king of Salem. Salem, not Salam, but Salem. You see the, the difference. Um, let's go through this briefly. Salem, as in Eru Salem, um, is dual. It, it's two-piece. It, it's like a, a, a duality of peace. While Salam is um, um, netale, you know what I'm saying? It, it's singular. It's a singular. Uh, the dual peace is in a singularity, but it's, it's, it's twofold, Salem. It, 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 okay, let me explain it. It's like as above, so below. You understand? It, 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 it's, it's, it's like um, one has peace on earth, you understand, and in the earthly things, and one is in peace in the spiritual, in the conscience as well. You understand? That's why it says that, that all power has been given to me in, in heaven and in earth. You know what I'm saying? So double fold that piece. It's like salam, salam twice is salam. We'll get into that a little bit more. So it's, it's peace, it's shalom. You know what I'm saying? Um, verse 3, it says, he had no recorded beginning of days. And this book here confirms the Gedla Adam, the um, conflict of Adam against Satan, or the Ethiopic book of Adam and Eve. It, it, it confirms and affirms that, that reality. It's very, very interesting. Um, and hopefully we'll have opportunity to get into it and you have opportunity to check it out for yourself. You might be able to find um, some versions of it, you know what I'm saying, um, on the Internet. We use the um, Reverend C.S. Milan, the 1882, you know what I'm saying, um, version there. We've published and reprinted it. But he had no recorded beginning of days, right? Um, fourthly, nor was he made a high priest by human appointment. And there was a lot men and people say, well, we like him for a priest. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we, 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 we like him for it, but let's all choose who we want to be a priest. It's not a human appointment. It's not by human appointment. And this is referring to Psalm um, 110 and 4. But the contrast between the, the high priesthood of Melchizedek and Aaron is only as to person, order, Order should be overstood as appointment. Order, appointment, and duration, and how long. So those three there, this comparison between Melchizedek and Aaron is only as to his person, as to his order, or his appointment. Bamarinya, the, um, the, the Shumet, Shumet. While in the Old Testament it also uses for order the Sir'at, or the Sher'at. All right, order, appointment, and duration. The word shumet is interesting because shumet comes from the good is uh, uh, siyume or shiyume, as in the title of his imperial majesty, the elect, the elect of God, or the appointed of God, right? The appointed. But in that word appointment, shumet, it means to name, to name. And then you have the word shum and shim. The word Shem comes from that. So when we say the Hashem, is to say the name. It, it, it's, it's virtually one and the same with Shiyume and Shum. So just a little bit more on that appointment or order. And thirdly is duration. How long? For how long is this? Well, we know that in Melchizedek's case, thou art a priest forever. How long? Forever. How long is forever? Forever, ever. You understand? Forever. You all right? So, um... In his work, the Moshiach, or Christos, he follows Christ. He follows the ironic pattern, not the ironic pattern, although, you know, words sound in power. You maybe can pick some sense out of that, but understand that he follows the ironic, according to Aaron. You understand the ironic pattern that we've been studying and learning in our Torah portion, readings and feedings right, in Christ, in his kingly character. And the shadow, the shadow of which Christ was the substance. So Aaron, when we're, when we're studying in the Torah portions 
as we're in um, the Midbar, and we still hopefully will do Phineas, uh, Phinehas, or um, Afenagus, you know, should we say. You know, in these Torah portions, we're learning about the pattern of the priesthood, you know, the basic foundational elements. This is what Christ taught the disciples as well. He spent those 40 days teaching them the law of Moses, teaching them the Psalms of David, teaching them the prophets, all things whatsoever concerning himself. He said, search the scriptures, search it. You think in, in, in that you have eternal life. He said, these are they which testify of me, of Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior. So it's important for us to understand that relationship, you understand, that truth, you understand. Now, moving forward, verse 7, it says, who, Melchizedek, who in the days of, it says, his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears to him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. So now here's where this, this comparison of Melchizedek, the ironic pattern, and Yeshua, you understand? It says, though he were a son, although he was a bane in the Hebrew, he was a lidge, or moreover, a welded, a weld, yet learned he obedience by what? How do you learn obedience? By the things which he suffered, by the things which he suffered. Now, if you just understand that principle and you're mature, you'll recognize the same as with I and I. So now we only learn to obey the right thing by the wrong things we go through. And then we get to recognize, you know, somebody told me that. Oh, man. And then we, we recognize, hey, so it, it's a principle that we're learning there. All right? Which you suffered. And being made perfect, practice makes perfect. Being made now perfect, learning obedience by the things he suffered. He became, he became, he be, right? He became the author the author of eternal salvation, eternal salvation, eternal Yeshua, eternal salvation to all them that obey him. That's the key. You know, a lot of folks talk about, well, the love of God is unconditional. How long will people be doolish and foolish? The word, you heard the word right here. You can go look it up for yourself in case you, you know, don't want to believe or trust what I'm saying. And you shouldn't. You should check it out for yourself. Like the Bereans, they were more noble than all of those in Thessalonica. You know, because they heard Hawaii Apollos preach. And every day when they heard, they went back and studied at night to really see if what he was saying was in the scripture. You know, the same thing I and I require and, 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 and love of I and I true brothers and, and sisters. Don't say, oh, yeah, I heard that. That was good. No, tell me, I heard that. I went to study and I found it to be the same thing. And, and here's a revelation I found. You understand? That, that's the order right there. But here we find that he is the author. That means he has written a script. Yeshua has written a script that, that, that repairs the breach of the systemic anomaly. You understand? He is the one. He now becomes the author, you understand, know of a, it's like, it's, it's like it within the computer. Remember back in the days, MS Word, Microsoft Word, it, they would have a new program, and whenever they released something, they would have a, a, a problem with it. And you had to go to the main website to, to, to get that new script, download something that would repair whatever breach was there. So Yeshua repaired that breach. He became the author of eternal salvation to who? To all people in the world? Potentiality-wise, yes, but to all them actively that obey him. When he said to go, you understand, go ye therefore. When he says to teach, you understand, what I commanded you, you understand. Now, that means you have to go, you have to, you have to teach, you understand, and, and there has to be teaching what he commanded. But there's a prerequisite even before going. The disciples had it because they walked with the master. You know, they talk with the master. You know, in our flesh, we have not, maybe in a sense of spirit, in the innermost of the inner, but it has to be confirmed, affirmed by the word. You know, we're saying the whole universe operates on this word. You know, we're saying the whole universe as well as the inner So all those that obey him, verse 10, he says, called of God. He was called of God and high priest 
a leak a kahinata a kahin hagadol after the order, after the order of Melchizedek. You understand? Know I'm saying that's first and foremost. Don't tell me about men and people who might have been inspired off of this before we lay the foundation and we build on the foundation. All right. Now here's where we want to start out, but we want to give you that so-called foreground, as it were. So he's called of God, the high priest, after the order of Melchizedek. So here's the parenthetic. Here is the appeal and the and the warning, right? Leading up to verse uh, 12. Well, chapter 6, verse 12. This portion actually goes forward. You'll send into the next chapter, but at verse 11 of chapter 5 of the epistle to the Ibrawian, to the Hebrews, he says, of whom, concerning Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Paul is saying, what? There's many things to be what? There's many things to say, and they're hard to be uttered. You know what I'm saying? They're hard to be uttered. Why? Because they were dull of hearing. They were dull of the Shema. They were dull of the, they could hear with the ear, but they, they wasn't hearing with the inner ear. They wasn't hearing with the spiritual ear. You know what I'm saying? Verse 12, he says, For when, for the time, for when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers. In other words, in the time that we should be those who go, you understand, and teach all nations. You know, from the good news of his majesty and his Christ. What does it say? For when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers, ye have need. That means we have a necessity. Something, necessity, something is lacking. You understand? You have need that one teach you again. That someone come and teach you again. That means we already knew it, but we became dull of hearing. We saw the focus on the, the natural world only and forget about the supernatural. Therefore, um, we, we are overcome, but we are not overcomers. Therefore, we live in a world where it seems as though evil is above good, instead of as his majesty teach I and I that good must be above evil. Good must overcome evil. So for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles, notice what it says, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, of the oracles of Jah, if you please. So question, if I were to ask you, what are the first principles of the oracle of the word of God? What are the first principles? What would you say? Now, I had to ask myself that question. When I really got this, I was like, wow, what are the first principles? So you start thinking about a lot of things, but is that first principles? What are the first principles? What are the first principles of the oracles of God? And it says, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat, not of solid food. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful, unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. That word full age is mature. You remember in the quotation from the Gospel of Him, Book 1, where, where, where um, his, his Matthew was asked as a mature Christian, you know what I'm saying? Because an immature Christian will tell you other things, like it's just about love. It's just about love and peace and love. Mm. No, it's not. That's not the first principle right there. You know what I'm saying? That's not the first principle. You know what I'm saying? But strong meat, solid food, belongs to them that are full age. Full age, the mature. So that means there is a, a basic level of knowledge. And then as we grow, you know, and there is more maturity, you know, and that, that's built up on that. Even those who by reason of use, by reason of use, have their senses, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. To discern what is good and what is evil, not according to their self-righteousness, but according to his righteousness. So they, they don't have a zeal in ignorance, you understand? But they are zealous, you understand, in a good thing, you understand? And in the true righteousness, not in their 
self-righteousness. Now, I notice that right here is really interesting as we go to verse, uh, or chapter, chapter 6, verse 1. It says, therefore, remember the chapters are uh, a break that was, some say, introduced in this. You will tend to give more um, context. You will understand some say division, but context to the reading it says, therefore, so that therefore is continuing from verse 14, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, leaving the principles of the teaching of Christ. So the first thing we need is, what did Christ teach? And then what did Christ teach? The doctrine, the teaching, the timherit. Let us go on to perfection. Let us go on, but remember, it's speaking to those who are mature. It's speaking to the mature. You know what I'm saying? Let us go on. To, see, some people read this and think, oh, we don't have to deal with the, the doctrine of Christ. Let's just go on to maturity, go on to perfection. No, it's not saying that. Paul is explaining an order, right? And then he says, not laying again, not laying again. And now here's where he shows us these first principles. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. The foundation of repentance, the foundation. No other foundation can be laid other than Geta Chinyesus Christos, other than Yeshua HaMoshir, other than Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior. No other foundation can be laid. You understand? Know so we're not laying again the foundation of repentance. You understand? Know Playing with masonry. We're not doing that. We're not laying again. A, he already laid the foundation because he's the master builder. You understand? Know saying? The true grand architect. You know what I'm saying? So we have to lay another foundation. But it says, be careful how you build on the foundation. That's what we must take care for. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. So there's a foundation of what? What's the first thing? Repentance. What is repentance? Repentance means having, thinking differently. Think differently. In fact, Apple, Steve Jobs or whatever, he got that right right there when he said, think differently. Think differently is actually is actually a more perfect translation of repentance coming from the Greek, coming from the metanao, you understand, the metanao, right? Um, but the foundation of repentance from dead works, from all these things that we're doing and we're saying, yeah, man, I'm doing job work. I love to ask one, well, what work is that? You know, they look at you, well, don't you know? No, I don't know what you do, what you call job work. What do you mean job work? Oh, you're doing your own thing and you're calling it job works. See, that's when people start to lie to themselves. You know what I'm saying? They keep lying that way. They begin to believe it. So when you tell them the truth, they get offended. You know what I'm saying? But it's not you. It's, it's how God's word is offending them. You know what I'm saying? But um, the truth is a offense, but it's not a sin, right? The truth is not effed up. It's not a sin. So the first is the foundation of repentance from dead works. And of what? What's the next? Verse 1. Verse 1, it says, and of faith. Amen again. And of faith toward in the direction of God the Father. But that faith really is Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? It's not so much as our faith, but it's our faith in he who is faithful. You know what I'm saying? We dispel all the other doubts for our faith in he who is faithful. But we grow in that faith in our knowledge of the word, of his word in spirit and in truth. Because if they don't have no spirit, this word is, is like dead letters. You understand? The, 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 it's really powered. This word is powered by the manifest Kedus. That's why Christ told the disciples to go to the upper room and keep praying, you understand, until the Holy Spirit be come upon them. Because he recognized that they needed, you understand, to have the Holy Spirit. One time in Rastafari, we would talk about that as like, you know, vibration. One time the elders used to speak about vibration. Like, I don't like that man vibe. You know what I'm saying? Because if we are in the teaching of his majesty, he's coming for a different vibration. He is not, you know what I mean? You don't feel the vibration of his majesty's teaching and his word or his action or his conduct. So some, he has a different spirit. You know what I'm saying? One has a different spirit. Um, let's continue with these basics. And, and Like I said, when, when it said um, the, the first principles of the oracles of God, I began to think about the things that I thought really come first. And, you know, and not that some of them are not first things, but what clarifies it is chapter 6, verses 1 and verse 2. So, so far we have repentance, right? Then we have faith, right? Then thirdly, we have the doctrine or the teaching of baptisms. That's important too. 
that's very, very important. And I don't know if I should go to the, you know, go to the board on this, but let's go to the board on this. The first, right, the first principles, right, principles, right, of the word, you understand, of the word of Jah, the word of God. The first principles. Now, from Hebrews chapter 6, verse, um, verse 1, it says, one, it says, repentance, right? Repentance, right? From dead works. From dead works. Because Jah, God, Yah, is not the God of the dead, right? But he's the God of the living, the God of Abraham the God of Yitzhak, the God of Yaiko, is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. So there must be a repentance. Now, if you break that word down in English, right, re means again, pent means to send. Re mean again, right, redo, read this, read that. And pent, you understand, pent means to send. Hex sixes and a pent sends, right, like a, like a pentagram. It, it, it's to send, right? And the hex, you always say like the six-point star, is to fix. But in this case, repentance would be to resend. You understand? To resend. That's, that's why when you look at the, the Greek metanao, right, it means to think differently. It's to have a different view. You understand? Have a different perspective. I've taught this before, but I want you to hear this, that I've heard a wise one say to I and I, or I picked up this wise one saying that um, salvation is a matter of perspective. Salvation is a matter of perspective. And a lot of things that tend to salvation, it's like if you, if you are, as they say, positive in, in a certain situation, you understand, that leads to a better outcome than when you are negative. You see, because you either, you attract, like attract like, you understand. So his word, John's word, attracts his Holy Spirit. The love of Jah's word, you understand, and the study of Jah's word, it attracts to us the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was the, the conduit. It was the carrier wave, in other words, for this word even from the very beginning. You understand? So the Spirit is, or the word is, 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 is Spirit powered, Holy Spirit powered. The next thing is, Right? So we deal with the foundation, to the foundation. Must go down to the foundation. The secondly is faith towards God. So secondly, interestingly enough, is faith, right, towards, or toward, right, faith toward God. Right? Faith towards John. Faith towards God. Now this is very, very interesting. We've touched on that. We often touch on that. I always like to go to the very... I'll say the root of it. I, I like to say faith. When you think of that word faith, it comes from amen, right? Amen. And if you look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, it's very interesting. You understand what faith is, the faithful and true witness. Faithful and true. So truth is connected. But to give one a, a better word than be Eve, you understand, in English, it would be trust, trust, confidence. If you don't trust something, you doubt it. You have no confidence in it. You understand? But if you trust something or someone, you understand, you have confidence in them. Even if they tell you something, you understand, and you know that they are trustworthy, you don't really have to say, prove everything to me, because they have already showed you or demonstrated you something or, or something that you must know is true already. You understand? Unfortunately, we have more faith in the world. Even the world has shown us that really we should have no faith in the world. We should have faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach. We should have faith in his word. For us as Aras Tafari, we should have faith and trust in the teaching of his majesty and those who his majesty has sent to I and I. You understand? So let's recognize, like I said, if you receive um, one in the name of a disciple, you have a disciple reward. If you see one in the name of a prophet, you have a prophet's reward. You understand? So if we receive in the name of the king of kings, what a, what a, what a, what a, what a great reward. 
you of him, I and I have, because the king of kings is true. Now, then it says in verse 2, it says the doctrine, which is the teaching of baptism. Right? Now, notice it says baptisms. Now, some will say, there's only baptism, there's water, there's water. You see, water is like your first birth in a sense. You know, when any mother knows or any father knows that when the water breaks, then the baby's coming forward. That's why one is baptized in the water. Remember what it says, that we, when we're baptized in the water, we are baptized into the death of Yeshua HaMoshiach. And John says, you know what I'm saying, John the, the Baptist, Matimko Johannes, that, that that's what he came, that's what he came to, to administer. You know, and that repentance, which was like a preparatory, you know, and, and we know this from in Hebrew, and in and in the Torah, and in Judaism, you know, and we know about the mikveh, what's called the mikveh or the mikvah. The mikvah is the immersion pool. You know, saying if we study Old Testament and Torah, we can see you know, saying that 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 pattern there. But baptism is plural because baptism is how many times? Well, in the water, it's only necessary symbolically, you understand, after John's baptism one. But really, there are three. It's three times. Not three times in the water, though some people might see it as a thing we're saying you have to go three times in the water. No. We're speaking about the fact that there is the baptism of water, there's the baptism of spirit, and then there's the baptism of fire. The baptism of fire. You understand? Um, and it's in that progression. It's in that sort of order. We'll get into that in a little in a little bit, but we want to go through this right here. Then it says, and of laying on of hands. And of laying on of hands. You remember what Christ sent the disciples at a certain point? He sent them to go out to heal, to lay on hands. I'm sure they were able to heal some, but there were some cases written to us in the Scriptures, in the Gospels, where they couldn't cast out demons or they couldn't, they wasn't able to. And they came to Yeshua and said, hey, we're not able to, why wasn't we able to do this? And he says, because of your lack of faith, because of your little faith, because of the weakness of your faith. So faith is really a very important key in the whole equation. I was even mentioned to, to a sister that was reasoning, one speaking about melanin, melanin, but we black, we got melanin. And I said, well, the melanin is not active. You understand? One thing, the knowledge of blackness. No, the melanin, you understand, is not active because of really the lack of faith. And now, how do we know this? I love what she said to me. She said, well, you know, the melanin is, is like, it's like, it's like an evidence. It, it, it has a meaning. And truly it does. Turn to chapter 11 of, of Hebrews. It says, now faith, right? Now faith, imnet, now faith. It is the substance of what is substance? The substance of things hoped for, of things that we expect. It's the evidence of things not seen. So truly, melanin 